All right. So the question is if this is supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia. The upper channel here shows the atrial electrograms. The lower channel shows the right ventricular electrograms. Okay. So the first bit, I'm going to call it sinus rhythm. Mm -hmm. The second bit, we're going to call it QRS. And that here on the markers, we have atrial sense from sinus rhythm, ventricular sense from the QRS. So as we move in time, this is what okay. is an A sense. Okay. Is a P wave. Yeah. <coughs> and this is what. It's a Q wave. Another QRS. Yeah. V sense. How about the next bit? This one. Mm, still another P wave, yeah. another QRS. Yeah. Next bit, the same. Same. How about this P wave? The question is, is this similar or different to the previous ones? Number one. The other question is, is it, does it come at a different interval? Because from here to here we have one interval that is the same as that. And this one, does it come sooner? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a PAC. So how about if we call this one? So that's a differential analysis. This is the question is, is this a PAC or is sinus? It's probably a PAC. How about this QRS? Or this over here? Mm -hmm. It's a little different, yeah. but it and comes se R it comes sooner. Comes sooner, but it's also the R is not. Yeah, it has a different morphology, but also this one has a different morphology, and this one as well, and this one as well. So I think the morphology on this case on the QRS is not very useful. But the question is, um, if this rhythm here is VT or SV, is ventricular tachycardia or atrial tachycardia. So what does it start with, St this arrhythmia? starts first with a PAC, yeah. which makes it very unlikely for a VT that starts with PAC. Mm -hmm. Now that's one question. So it starts with a PAC, good. The other question is, during the rhythm, are there more P waves or A waves, right? A for A sense. Mm -hmm. Are there more A waves or V waves? It looks like in a quick look, almost more A. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> let's look at this. So we have one A wave, one B. One A, one V. 1A, 1V. 1A, 1V. 1A, 1V. 1A, V, A, V, A, V, A, V. And then this A maybe drops. So we have more A's than this. That makes this the diagnosis of atrial tachycardia, superventricular tachycardia, were way more likely than VT. Mm -hmm. Now the other differential diagnosis or the other possibility will be that this is a combination of an ATAC plus VT mm -hmm. and that they start at the same rate then the VT slows down while the AT keeps going but that's very unlikely. So because of all this, this is very likely to be and this is very likely to be an SVT. All right, let's look at the next slide. This is the same arrhythmia, but it's the termination. <coughs> How does it terminate? Is the question. So this is an A. These are Vs, and it terminates with. 
the last bit, the last electrogram, yeah. is this one. Now, if this were to be ventricular tachycardia, and this A is coming from there, there should be a, an A here that is coming from there. Okay. Right? Right here. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not. So, what is it more likely that <coughs> this A let me erase this real quick. Is it more likely that this A comes to here, this one to here, and since there is no A, there is no V? Or is it more likely that the tachycardia terminates at the same time that the V doesn't go up to the A? So the most likely explanation is that this A was coming to this V, this A was coming to this V, and this is the last bit of the tachycardia. And this was a superantegral tachycardia. So it terminates with, with a V, making it very likely to be an SVT or an intertachycardia.